Deep Dive Film School makes no claim of ownership of the film footage used in this episode. The film footage is owned entirely by the copyright holders. Also, we're going to spoil the hell out of this movie, so this is your warning. Welcome to Deep Dive Film School! Oh, this week we get a bonus episode for our food movie festival. We're going to review a Forgotten Gem 1996 film, Big Night. Let's dive in! <laughs> <laughs> I'm Adam Sherlock. I'm Adam Pulcher. And if you like what you see slash here, please like and subscribe. You can find us in all the spaces and places that people what? Find good media. That is right. We have festivals. We've got 101s, punishment reviews, and forgotten gems. So and, really, yep, the scene analysis. Yeah, the, mm -hmm. for, the forgotten gems in particular, though. That's what we're doing this <laughs> yes, week. Yes, it and, is. And, and really, this is an it's opportunity to talk about movies that either show up for just a hot second or people never talk about and big That's night true. i feel like is a movie people never talk about it's true did you know about this movie when you were in the 90s no when it came out I no didn't. um it was one that i kind of found you know i you know i think it fits perfectly with our food movie festival oh yeah um but it is a forgotten one it is one that you know stanley tucci wrote and directed this right which is kind of interesting campbell scott who's also in the movie briefly as the car salesman also they co-directed it together that's so funny it's interesting yeah. and they had all this backing but they didn't want to change the ending um and um basically they wrote it themselves because they wanted a good part for themselves and it's i have to say like nothing about this movie feels a like an american movie mm -hmm. and b feels like a movie made by people who've ever even been near Hollywood. Like it feels so indie and it feels like a foreign film. Hmm. Um, I could see that in the scenes that it chooses to show in the movie, um, in the way that it decides to hand out information um, to the audience. Uh, and then just the verite style in which it's directed. Like mm -hmm. it feels very, Maybe not completely fly on the wall, but the I, I way in that. which that we, we have like four or five sequences in the movie where this amazing, just absolutely lovely score um, that's very plucky and kind of like jauntily moving along. The movements of characters are not necessarily set exactly to the pace of the music, but it's it gives it this energy mm -hmm. and the camera sort of just moving around. And in the beginning, we have this whole sequence where they're chopping up food and cooking it. And the camera again, in this almost documentary way, thinking back about something like Jiro mm -hmm. is like moving around and over people's shoulders and seeing what they're doing. And I don't know. I just was like, the movie gave me such a different feel. Um, I agree. It yeah. is, it is very indie feeling mm -hmm. and low budget. Yeah. Um, you know, they're, in New York, right? It's yeah. It's 1950s, but they don't really show us New York. New York is not a character, really. Mm -mm. You're, you're maybe on one street, which maybe is the budget constraints. You can't uh, change decades of New York City without having some money, I'm sure. Yeah, yeah. Um, so they, they kept it small. Like, I could see this being a play almost. Oh, that's um, what I was thinking, too. Um, it is really small. There aren't big establishing shots of anything. Mm -hmm. Like, in fact, our opening, we start in the kitchen, apropos, and then we move into the front. <clears throat> yeah, it's front of the house and back of the house. From front of the mm -hmm. house to the porch. And eventually we get to see what's further up the front road or further up the street from that front porch kind of cafe area. Yeah. And that's it. Mm -hmm. Like, and you I don't really even know like the that. name of the move uh, of the restaurant really mm -mm. Um, until like halfway through. Yeah. Like, what is it? Like, you can barely see the sign. And, yeah. Oh, Paradise. Okay. Yeah. Interesting. But it's funny you say this is an American movie. Um, it's an American immigrant movie. I yes, would say this very is much. An so. Immigrant story, and maybe that's why it doesn't seem American. You know, if this was some rich or, or some struggling white family, this probably wouldn't be as effective. It right? would probably be different. Well, I think that I guess what I mean, almost in a really weird way, and I wrote it down like two different times while watching this. But I was like, if if I didn't know, I would just go, oh, the one guy in the movie kind of looks like Tony Shalhoub. Mm -hmm. And the other guy in the movie kind of looks like... They're uh, both... Uh, Shalhoub looks pretty much the same, but Tucci looks really young here. Well, but I, I guess I mean in their mannerisms, mm. seeing both of them in whole sections of the movie just speaking in Italian, 
Um, mm-hmm. They they embody these characters so wholly that it doesn't feel in that way. It doesn't feel like an American movie. It doesn't feel like oh, here's no, two no, yeah. actors who've come <laughs> up in Hollywood that are playing these characters. It doesn't feel like that at all. Again, like it sounded like the producers wanted to turn this into an American movie and have some happy ending or mm-hmm. having you know have Louis show up or whatever. Yeah, um, you know, and there's really I I don't know. This kind of made me appreciate like all of these movies and this whole fest made me appreciate movies that have low stakes and how that's so necessary for us as an audience to have that option because not everything is death and murder and excitement and action that's not life let's be honest it's great to have movies like this about real people they're 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 going to connect with you more than Spider-Man flying around a city. Well, you know? and that's a really interesting point. If what you're trying to do is a real character study, then like having lower stakes makes the reactions of the character and the way in which they make choices um, resonate more with us as an audience because we can identify with it, mm-hmm. right? And I think even that, though they're foreigners, yeah, like these two brothers, like this relationship that they have is like so easy to identify with in the sense of like it's really okay here's here like this was deeply surprising to me so we have um we got uh primo and segundo yeah and and you I mean literally like first and second the first and <laughs> second which like you're like oh my god can you imagine growing up being like oh you're second <laughs> right um and 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 segundo really is the one who's like trying to assimilate he's trying to have this su- successful restaurant um you know it's primo who is the one that is like cutthroat when it comes to mm-hmm. i cook the way i cook you know and, i love this first scene of them and uh the couple in the restaurant that just wants spaghetti because the risotto is weird yeah yeah and they're and like what is just this pissed off yeah. about it and so he's like why not why don't we do hot dogs isn't that what you do? <laughs> that's what they do in america right how you say uh, a dog hot right dog? yeah <laughs> Uh, that whole sequence is just great. But but what I find really interesting is that Segundo, we kind of follow him for a little while yeah. because we start to get to know like, okay, Primo is... He's more of a main character, yeah. Yeah, Primo's a little bit more shy and kind of weird. He what might have this chef. thing. Yeah, genius chef. You might have a thing for the flower girl, uh, Allison, uh, young Allison Janney. I know, wow. Uh, huh? Which is fantastic. But you're like, okay, he's not weird, but he's a little more unapproachable. And so we're like, okay, we're with Segundo. He's a little awkward. And he's, he's I mean... He's made a career of, of being wonderfully awkward. Oh, like, yeah. oh yeah. I think Shalhoub is a national treasure. I fucking oh. love him. Oh yeah. And honestly, this is one of the only movies or anything that he's ever done where I feel like I'm not laughing my ass off. He makes me laugh so hard. Oh yeah, he's incredible. And um he's in he's in some great Coen Brothers movies. He's in Marvel Marvelous Mrs. Maisel. Yeah. As the Galaxy um, Quest baby. Oh yeah, that that's one. that's Wings, one of my... he did Wings Forever. Yeah, like, yeah, yeah. Uh, anyways, uh, great stuff. Uh, Monk. Yeah. yeah, Monk, that's the other um, one. But, you know, we really fo- follow Segundo, and, and we, we we meet his cute girlfriend, played by Minnie Driver mm-hmm. here, which I'm sorry, but, like, American accent Minnie Driver in the 90s, it, like, get off it. She's the cutest thing. Man, when she comes out of the ocean, I was like, holy shit. Yeah, she's <laughs> just, like, uh, and just, like, the American accent thing, too, I think, between this and... Uh, Goodwill Hunting. What would it be? Uh, yeah, no, yeah. she does uh, have a uh, gross point point. That's I right. think that's the one. Goodwill Hunting. She does have. She, her yeah, but accent. like, yeah, come on, man. Um, <laughs> but what's interesting is, and so you start to go, okay, I think I know who uh, Segundo kind of is, right? And you're like, I get this. And then, so much further into the movie, we see him with the the local Isabella Rossellini. Uh, yeah, Isabella Rossellini's character, mm-hmm. who's kind of like. She's she works for the rival mm. restaurant yeah. in the neighborhood, but also like, is it me or is she like a woman of the night? Maybe or is she possibly? Um, it seems like she's got a couple different guys that are propositioning her, and you just get yeah, you get a vibe that she's I, like. I didn't really think about it in the moment, but now that you say it, I could see that it's way less that he's having an affair with her specifically, and it's more like. Oh, everybody sleeps with her at Ian, some point. Yeah, it's and, Ian Holmes' girlfriend. Yeah, right? and he runs the restaurant that is the more Americanized Italian. Yeah, thing with the and, and, and and Rosalini's like the uh, yeah. uh, front desk girl or whatever, or you know, a, a, not a waitress, but or a host. Yeah, maybe I guess it's like a hostess. 
at that other restaurant. But you do get the impression of like, she might be the one who's kind of uh, ticking off the boxes of all the young men who come through, you know, this <laughs> restaurant. Um, but we don't see the two of them in bed together until much later after we've totally invested in Segundo in his dreams mm -hmm. in his relationship with Minnie Driver. And I was like, what a, again, non-Hollywood. I was like, what an interesting choice to suddenly be like, Hey, this guy that you've spent this time, like getting to know and like, like kind of scummy. It's probably the like, most American Whoa. part of the movie. It totally is. <laughs> That's a really good point. But I think it's really interesting. Like normally a, like a, a more homogenized movie wouldn't do that. Right. Mm -hmm. Like they would be like, Whoa, 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 Whoa. It's mini fucking driver we can't have him cheating on her right <laughs> well, yeah i mean she wasn't i don't i don't think anyone at this point really like maybe it's small career um across the pond or no something no like. no for sure but i'm just saying but like no, no, you introduce yeah, like, a super cute character and then you're like and he's cheating on her you're like well now the audience doesn't like him yeah right but i think that's okay i think that's great actually and and it's a very interesting aspect and, there, and that happens a couple of times in this movie. Characters make decisions where either A, in the case of Ian Holm, we don't like him, then we like him, then we don't like him again. And by the end, we're kind of like, I don't hate, you're not a mustache twirling villain. No. You just have your own motivations exactly. that are kind of shitty. Mm -hmm. But I like that, again, we talked about this last week. We talked about signs and and how I was like, you know, Shyamalan's terrified to not live in either the black or the white mm -hmm. and have things be really distinct. And here, this whole movie's kind of a gray area. Yeah. Like, we're still rooting for our main characters, even though, like... The restaurant's struggling. Yeah, and they're... He doesn't want to make spaghetti. And they have a <laughs> shitty relationship. And yeah. it's have... kind of both of their faults, but neither one of their faults. And, like, I love that. It's And you're right, like it makes sense that the producers and these guys like had to, had to kind of go the rounds because it isn't an easy film in that way. It's not a, you know, it's not my big fat Greek wedding where it's like, and it all with a bow on top and sure. everybody's happy. Yeah, no. You know? And I don't think it has to. And that's probably what the producers were complaining about. Um, and that's what I'm saying. Yeah. yeah. It's not really needed. I think that's what adds this, that, that special sauce that they're using here to cook the movie if you see what I'm doing. <laughs> what if I didn't? What if you kept going and I'm like, I don't... What if, All my food metaphors. Yeah, is this... <laughs> well, they're just going right over my head. <laughs> um, but yeah, no, I, I totally agree. It's, it's, a, it's a small, little, wonderful movie about the American dream, right? Mm -hmm. That's what it's about, mm -hmm. is, is immigrants moving to America in the 50s and trying to start a small business of their... you know, And in a place, in a melting pot like New York City... That's perfect. Don't and who you doesn't want to see that? Don't you think that at some point, Segundo, like when they're having their conversation and he's like, Primo's like, I talked to cousin so-and-so and like, he's starting a new restaurant. Yeah. He has a place for us. Mm -hmm. I'm going to go. You should come too. And they're having that discussion. It's and, a fight on the beach. Yeah. And Segundo like, so, well, it's before the actual fight starts. It's that mm -hmm. first Argument. like yeah. pulling the thread of like, mm -hmm this experiment's over. Well, yeah, he kindly has to accept the truth that this Louis guy's not, not going. Yeah. Um, not going to come. But in that moment, I think it's so interesting because in that moment, like Segundo doesn't really have a good reason to not accept the idea of going back to Italy. Well, except it's, defeat. And that's what I mean is it's like, it isn't even like the quote unquote American dream that Segundo for so long has really been sort of like laser focused with, right? Of mm -hmm. like, I'm going to have an American girlfriend. I'm going to buy an American car. I'm going to have a successful American yeah, he restaurant. Like he wants the whole thing. He, and in that moment when he's like, why not come back with me? He's like, cause I can't. They right? are, they are a yin and, and yang. Yeah. They're a yin and yang yeah. relationship, right? Because he is the one who's going to the car dealership and looking at new cars. Oh, I'm just, I'm just swinging. I, no, I'm just, you know, that was in the neighborhood, but yeah. but yeah, he's got his eyes on the prize. He yeah. wants to be a big, popular, famous restaurant. Yeah, um, and Primo just wants to cook. Like he doesn't want anything else. And oh, those moments later on where it's him and and Alice and Jenny in the kitchen, and he's explaining the why he does the things that he does, so like in in this style. And again, I mean, we talked about this when we did Chef, and I was like, 
there's nothing better than the seduction scene through cooking. Mm -hmm. And there's that great one there. And there's another great one here yep. um, that is just like, yeah, to watch somebody be masterful at the thing that they're good at mm -hmm. is like the biggest turn on. Right. And um, well, I guess we haven't even really gotten through the plot here, I, but literally would, the plot is just that they have, a, yeah, they need to have a good, they need to have a big win. They need to have a good night. This famous musician is coming. This can bring all these people. And Ian Holm has this weird duplicitous relationship with the brothers where it's yeah. like, he's, he's a competitor. He's but. a competitor, but he also is, puts on airs of being a supporter of them in this really patronizing way. Yeah. In this real way. But at the same time, he's also Ian Holm doing this amazing Italian accent. So you kind of can't help but also find him charming I and hilarious. Uh, Dude, the whole scene of it is it's raining inside. Uh, yeah. That whole like <laughs> bit back and forth around the water cooler. I don't know how the three of them didn't break. It is the fucking funniest scene. <laughs> yeah. And he's just confused by the joke that they're telling. It's so good. So uh, what to me makes this movie go from good to great is that they, it, it's the way it's filmed. It's how it's written. It's how it's acted. And it's coming back to the low stakes again, to some degree, mm -hmm. but they have this big night and they're waiting for this guy to arrive and everyone, you know, everyone's eating all this great food and just like, you know, they're in food comas afterwards. Yeah. And, and just they're doing a the good dancing time around drinking. the tables. Yeah, they're and... drinking, they're dancing. And so the fact that this movie still has this big night and he doesn't show up, to me, doesn't really matter because they still had this amazing night. Yeah. Right? And all the people that do celebrate them are there. And everyone had a good time. He gets complimented the whole night saying that's the best meal I've ever had in my life. Yeah. Um, you know, and to me, it's almost more hopeful. I know that they, the guy never shows up and their big night is ruined or whatever, which is, uh, but to me, the fact that they accept that and just move forward mm -hmm. and, um, and have this perspective that at least I did as the person watching this, I don't know if the characters necessarily did, but Hey, we still had a fucking awesome night. Yeah. And even though the thing didn't happen and we may go under or whatever, you know, he, at the beginning of the movie, he's begging the bank for money, right? Yeah. Yep. Um, you know, it's probably not a great outlook, but I, I'm glad this movie had the balls to stick with the low stakes and do live in that gray area that mm -hmm. you're talking about. Well, I mean, and it, and it, it, in that sense, reminds me of something like, like waiting for Guffman. <laughs> right where it's like it's like we're gonna put on airs and do this huge thing because this is gonna be the night that changes everything and it's like so you worked your ass off and you Great did the, the best job you could and the thing never happened mm -hmm. but that doesn't mean that you didn't do all the other parts of it right and, and let's be fair the other important key element here is that this fight on the beach between the two of them can only could only have happened because if you think about it for so long uh primo's been saying it's about the cooking the cooking is the most important thing it's not about it's not about all the glitz and glamour he can't do it without him all the stuff that he wants well and meanwhile segundo's going over to ian holmes place and just like Look like now this is a restaurant, is right? Wants, yeah. Like it's got swing and jazz music playing. It's got a little bar. It's got all the cool shit in it. And it's like, this is what I want. And it's like the night had to happen the way it was going to happen. And Ian Holm had to admit to both of them, hey, I kind of fucked you guys over and lied about this dude because I want you both to come and work for me. Yeah. That had to happen because that's the only way that Segundo would believe Primo of like, stop trusting that dude. He does not have our best interest in mm -hmm. mind, and which then melts down into the fight. And they both say a bunch of shit that they've been needing to say this whole time. Right. And the fact that that then bleeds over into this next morning and again, cooking again as a central theme, this time Segundo cooking the omelet mm -hmm. and sharing it with his yeah. brother and this like tender touching of just silence. Yeah. Like it goes, makes you go, Oh, they're going to be okay no matter what, exactly. but yeah, it has to go through that whole and art it, and it comes back to food. Yeah. Right. It ends on it. Which brings me to this point. And I don't know. And we touched on this a tiny bit when we did chef you were talking about what's the name of the um 
the chef that actually uh, worked on the movie and was really coaching. Here's oh, the way you Roy set Choi. up the kitchen. Yeah, yeah, Roy Choi. And I started thinking about this, and I was like, you know, and this goes for the whole festival, I mean, with the exception of uh, Jiro as a documentary, but we talk about the idea of doing method. We talk about the idea of uh, learning fighting techniques to do action scenes. Yep. But let's talk about, in the movies we've watched, the method of having to seem like a good cook, <laughs> but you're an actor who, like, you need to learn how to do, like, in these scenes, watching Tony Shalhoub, like, cook, and it's him. We see it's actually yeah. him. And but he's... Tucci at the end is making that online. Yeah, and you're watching it, and you're like, God, you're... this looks incredible. Yeah. Like, like it's a completely different level of skill that I just didn't even think about. And I think, the, the to me, the combination between A watching these guys actually being able to cook in this movie and B watching them in their heightened Italian mannerisms. Mm -hmm. I was like, this is some of the greatest acting, just acting, acting I've seen in a really long time yeah. where they disappear into these roles where I'm like, no, that's not Tony Shalhoub. That's Primo. Yep. He's an Italian cook. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, yeah. it's just, it was so vibrant watching these guys. It is. It's a joyful, satisfying movie. Yeah. You know, again, the low stakes, like, it, it's just so refreshing to have something like that. Also, the first food movie that doesn't have a food critic in it. Uh, all they just, really want is customers. They yeah, don't even care about the It's just a critics. competitor. That's the only person. <laughs> they the wish only they person. had a food critic. Yeah, yeah, yeah. They would love to have a food <laughs> critic. No, it's just, it was, and I do but, think that's where I... The characters they just dis they disappear into these characters is through all that manner. Absolutely, and and I, um, I challenge anyone who thinks that, uh, including um, the one of the brothers, that they left with nothing that night because it's right. not you know no 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 I mean it's I mean listen there's a lot of loose ends that get tied up that <laughs> night you know and again to me all through this real verite. Lots of handheld shots, lots of just kind of like over in the corner or the camera picks up and is moving all the way down the tables. Like all that stuff. I was just like, I love the the loose feel of this. And again, mm -hmm. the music, the score. Yeah. Um, what did you think about the use of these title cards that kind of pop up so late into the movie? It's like after like when we finally get to the first dish, all of yeah. a sudden black title card. And I was like. Well, it's going through the courses of the meal, right? But it was weird. Like, it and a lot of, of movies do this. Uh, I've seen lots of movies in our festival that have done this, as yeah. well as other food movies, movies I've seen, where they do that. They do a black title card, and they say whatever the first dish is. Sure. And I'm always like, <laughs> is that necessary? I mean, I guess. I, I mean, it's good to know, I guess, what it is. But, yeah, it did come out of nowhere. I, I will give you that. Um, but... Yeah, I don't know. And you forget that Tucci is a chef too, right? Like totally. He's cook he was co he's cooking and they do have that little brotherly hug at the end. And it's really sweet. And like you said, they're going to be okay. Well, did, do you think that dish they made looked good? Which one? The big weird uh, the, oh, the tur the turtle pot. shell thing. Yeah, that was weird. I'd never like seen that before. eggs in it. Yeah, it had like a yeah, it was like a pie. Almost. Yeah, it was like a z. It looked like a z. I mean, I like a boil, uh, boiled egg. But... I, yeah, but not in the middle of a z. Pie. <laughs> yeah, I thought yeah, it was. It a was ziti. like a, it yeah. was like a z. Calzone yeah, or it, something. It, it looked, looked really uh, weird. heavy on the stomach. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. There was like big chunks of ham in it. I was like, I don't know. That doesn't. It's like but, head um, cheese. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Um. <laughs> Anyways, a uh, really fun movie and a movie, again, that is just kind of forgotten a little bit. And yeah. I think um, it has been it was really fun to revisit. And these Forgotten Gem episodes always do well. Our Ice Storm one is one of our most popular episodes I think it's because people get all excited that someone's talking about a movie that they love. And they're like, I've, I never hear people talk about it. It's true. It, and know? yeah, no one knows this movie, like you said. And it had two, at the time, pretty not famous people, maybe Tucci, but like he's pretty bit. young here. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and you know, uh, it's just very more indie than I remember it though. Like totally. you said at the beginning. Yeah. And so I appreciated that and the choices they made. Cause it doesn't need, it's a big night, but it doesn't need to be a big movie. No, it, it, it again, like the, I think the one I had said earlier was like my big fat Greek wedding, but like that kind of a movie that's just like becomes this indie darling because it's so like, uh, Again, happy go lucky in this really fake saccharine I've way. I've never seen it actually. And and this to me reminded me more of a movie like Diner. 
Yeah. Where you're like, you'll like these characters, but their choices aren't always great yeah. and their lives are really They're complicated. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And like that, you can still really enjoy that, but you're, you're going to do a little more work, right? To enjoy and, it. And having it be all wrapped up into this American dream yeah. part of it yeah. is, is really good. And real, I don't know. Like I said, it, having those low stakes to me is what makes this movie great not good yeah so agreed all right well uh, that is the end of the food movie festival officially i know we like to always do these little bonus episodes but yeah. um appreciate everyone watching and listening uh with us uh next week we're gonna get into that one scene from psycho yeah you know uh, the one. yeah i think we know the one um and then we are gonna start a wong kai war festival uh wong so, kar wait wong kar wai that yeah you gotta did little... i say it backwards yeah sorry uh, Wong Kar Wai. Um, can't wait for that one. Yes. Uh, so please join us. Like and subscribe on YouTube and Instagram. That's where we are most active. Yep. Uh, we're also on TikTok as well uh, for the time being. All right. Thanks, everyone. Bye, you guys. Bye.